Is this new Aquaman worth $24.99? Or is it a classic case of bait and switch? Before taking the plunge with your hard-earned clams, stick around and find out. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the DC Multiverse JLA-themed Plastic Man Build-A-Wave Aquaman. Starting with the packaging, and once again, we have the extra-wide Build-A-Wave window box. Not a whole lot in that box this time. Of course, we're collecting to build Plastic Man. This particular Aquaman is from JLA, and kudos to McFarlane. Aquaman is the only figure in this entire wave who actually is. Flipping around back, you can see what I mean. Otherwise, we just get some artwork a plastic man, a key of his parts, and instructions how to build him. For those searching in stores for Arthur, and here's the barcode, and thanks to accurately representing what's in the box for packaging, I'm giving Aquaman five points. Moving on to presentation, an Aquaman stands at seven inches and is a retooled version of Endless Winter. Even the head has been mildly tweaked and improved on. Additionally, his skin tone is richer and more realistic, and I really like the wash that's been added to the hair to bring out all the detail. Gone is the scale male shirt, and in its place is some shoulder and arm armor. The entire torso and arms have been re-sculpted, and I have to say I'm very impressed with all the dings and scrapes in the armor to make it look realistic. Even though he's shirtless, I don't exactly know why they didn't give him a nipple and a belly button, but the most important thing that they did give him is his hook. If I recall correctly, this is the tip of his trident. Just like the armor, there's some nice scrapes and dings in there too. With such a staggering attention to detail, imagine my disappointment at the lower half. Not surprisingly, they reused the lower half from Endless Winter, but instead of sculpting the scales running down his legs, they only painted them on. Not even all of them. Just a patch on either side. I know Hasbro did the same thing with Namor, but for one thing, I didn't like it then either. And for another thing, at least they did the whole thing. Even Mattel fully sculpted them when they did it for DC Universe Classics. And they gave it a nice dry brush. And that's Mattel, the king of reuse. In fact, except for some articulation points, this version still really holds up. I wouldn't be so upset if not for the fact that this is my favorite version of Aquaman, and because, well, honestly, I just expect more out of McFarlane toys. Arthur Curry is part Atlantean and part human, and similarly, this figure is kind of half and half for me. Great attention to detail on that new torso, but the incomplete painted on scales really do knock it down a peg. Like this figure, I'm gonna meet in the middle, and for presentation, give Aquaman three points. Moving on to posability, an Endless Winter Aquaman is one of McFarlane's best articulated figures. Figures. Naturally, I'm curious and cautious as to whether or not this is an improvement or a downgrade. From the top, and we know what that long Atlantean hair means, it means he has to use a lot of product. It also means he can't really look up. Down is no trouble, though, as we can clearly see he can bury the chin. The hair is far enough away from the shoulders that he can get a bit of tilt, and of course, side to side. Moving on down, and his arms can raise this high. Thanks to the rotator cuff, and Arthur's all over the place. He's also got bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and a right hand on a McFarlane wrist ball that can swivel, and as well as hinge in any direction, but they also went the extra mile to add twist to his hook. It's a great attention to detail and a lot of fun. Shifting over to Arthur's nippleless and belly button free torso when he has a diaphragm joint and a dumbbell waist, he can arch back this far, bring it out Endless Winter and that's just as good, and he can hunch forward this far which is not only as good as Endless Winter, but honestly, just a little bit better. He also has a kingly amount of tilt and twist. Below that golden belt, and Arthur has the typical McFarlane hips, wonderful high kick on him, not to mention a perfect split, and honestly, a little bit better. I know it'll never compete with a thigh cut, but the amount of twist is really good here. He also has double knee, which would probably bend a little bit deeper if not for the fin, but this is fine. And then all the way down, of course, he's got toe articulation and McFarlane ankles that can swivel, hinge, and like Aquaman, going from pretty lame on the Super Friends to pretty rad in the comics, Pivot. Aquaman remains one of the best articulated DC Multiverse figures, and for posability, he's more than earned his five points. Moving on to playability, and despite my glowing praise of his articulation, this is where this boat starts to sink. He does have the standard trading card and figure stand. If I could just direct your attention to the artwork for a second, it comes directly from the cover of JLA number one. Keep that in mind once we get to Superman and Batman. If you want to learn more about Aquaman, you can pause here. In terms of Aquaman, Man accessories, that's it. The 
only other thing in the box are the arms of Plastic Man. And those arms, by the way, are literally just blue beetles. I get that in a Build-A-Figure wave, they have to spread that budget out across all four figures, and that's really a discussion for price. To be honest, I don't even need that much extra. I'd have been happy with just a couple of extra right hands. Specifically, an accessory holding one and a swimming one. Fortunately, playability is more than just accessories. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. Starting with some other Aquaman, and here we have the Kenner Total Justice version, which is the first use of this design in plastic, and again, the DC Universe Classics one by Mattel. Moving over to McFarlane, though, and here we have the DC Multiverse Endless Winter Aquaman. For the rest of the Justice League, though, and here we have Superman from Action Comics 1000, Superman from Hush, and the official long-haired DC Multiverse version of The Return of Superman. Having been built off of the Dark Knight Returns body, I do feel like this looks pretty ridiculous. So for your consideration, here's my kit bash. It combines the Return of Superman head with the Rebirth 2-pack version of Superman and the trunks from the Doomsday 2-pack. All I need is a better cape. Speaking of capes, and switching over to the Cape Crusader, and here we have Nightfall Batman, Three Jokers Batman, which we'll be revisiting in a later video, and lastly, the oversized Hush. For Wonder Woman, and here's the McFarlane Collector Edition, but just for jollies, I thought I'd bring out the Justice League Icons version by DC Direct. Although not a complete match, this costume is a lot closer to what she was wearing in the JLA comic. Next up is Barry Allen. Of course, Wally West was the Flash during JLA. And for the Green Lantern of the JLA, and here we have Kyle Rayner. I chose the gold label version because I thought it matched the comic a bit better, but it also better matches the last member of the JLA, Marsh and Manhunter. As for some Aquaman supporting characters, and here we have the Paige Pontra's Aqualad, the DC Direct Brightest Day Mira, as well as Black Manta from Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. It might be a movie figure, but it's a pitch-perfect representation of the comic. For something a bit more stylized, though, and here we have the Page Puncher's Black Manta, and lastly, the Target-exclusive gold label Ocean Master. For a relative skill comparison, here's Aquaman with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man, and as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. What this Arthur lacks in accessories, he more than makes up for in his ability to display with either a 90s Justice League or other Aquaman characters. As I said before, the only other accessories I would have liked would have been some alternate right hands, so it's not the end of the world. Even so, for playability, I'm giving this Aquaman four points. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Aquaman and the entire JLA wave retail for $24.99. For comparison and food for thought, the new digital Aquaman is also $24.99, but he comes with an extra head, two pairs of extra hands, a trident, and a poseable quisp. <laughs> it's my favorite Aquaman design, so I fell for it hook, line, and sinker. But for price, I'm giving JLA Aquaman three points, averaging to a not-so-royal total of four out of five. What's your favorite version of Aquaman? Sound off in the comments, and while you're down there, tell me what you think of this wave so far. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.